Well, as Tim Hughes wrote, here I am to worship. And that's what we ultimately gather as a group of believers to do, isn't it? To worship and praise our great God for who he is and for what he has done. Even though we can't do that in person at the moment, I want to say thank you again one more time to Laura and Lori and Olivia and Heather for once again lifting our hearts to worship Jesus through your music today. So appreciate uh, your uh, recordings of these songs to help our services over the last while. Well, folks, welcome to May, Chalmers Community Church family and friends. May! Pastor Bruce Jones here with you on this second day of May 2021. Uh, it's been a typical spring around here, I think, over the last week or so, with everything from temperatures warm enough to sit and sweat outside, to snow in the air, to wild winds and thunderstorms and a good bit of rain along the way as well. Just a typical spring week, isn't it? But nay, this is the month where life kind of seems to spring back into action, right? This is the month where most of our crops will be planted. This is the month where vegetable gardens are started and when trees fill out with uh, the beautiful green of their new leaves. This is the month where we might dip our toes back into Lake Huron for the first time. This is the month where we break out our hiking boots again or dust off the rakes and the hose and the garden shovels. This is the month where we change the oil in the tractor or we change the snow tires off the cars. This is the month where we start smelling fresh cut grass. This is May, folks, and we are finally into this month. Now, for a few of us, uh, there are some firsts in these days as well. This is the first spring that Ruth and I have been here in Kincardine, and um, we've discovered, uh, made some new discoveries uh, lately. We have discovered that the soil in our garden, we have a vegetable garden at the back of our property, which uh, we'll be planting this month, but we've discovered that the soil in our vegetable garden is extremely Sandy. Now, I guess a lot of the soil is sandy around here, as I understand. But uh, thanks to David Alexander, we got bags of chicken manure to help put some more nutrients into our soil. And let me tell you, I have never dealt with so many bird droppings in my life. We still have three bags of it left. It will probably work those bags into the soil at the end of the growing season. But uh, that's helpful. It's great. But it's a new, that's a first for me. Um, I've also discovered I have a, a lawn tractor for the first time ever in our lives. It came with this house, and um, I have discovered that using a garden tractor to mow your lawn is like learning how to drive a Zamboni on a weirdly shaped ice rink, right? Uh, Ruth laughed and laughed at how crooked my lines were the first time I cut our grass a couple of weeks ago. I've cut it another time since then, and my lines got straighter. I'm really trying, but I think I need Tom Evans to teach me how to plow in a straight line. You know, the plowing match guy. Tom, you teach me how to, how, to, how to stay in a straight line. I think I need your help. Well, even in our COVID-tainted world, this new month awakens, at least in me. Uh, I don't know what the per why the perspective is different, but it, it, uh, this new month has awoken in me a new hope. I guess, a new sense of patience, a renewed trust. And we knew all the way along, but there's yet a renewed trust that all will be well in God's time. Even though we have to remain physically distanced and refrain from meeting in groups and all those restrictions still for a while longer, there will be a day when we're going to be able to sit beside a friend in the park. There will be a day when you can meet someone at uh, the coffee shop and have coffee and conversation together. There will be a time where, where you'll be able to sit at a restaurant table and have other people around you. There will be a time when you'll be able to sit back in our church pew and not have to worry about how close or far away you are from other people. You'll be able to sit in the stands at a baseball game. There will be a day when we'll be able to interact with other people, when we won't have to be wearing masks all the time. There will be a day when you can hug a friend. There will be a day when you can shake hands again. Boy, I'm looking forward to shaking hands again. I've really missed that. All that good stuff may just makes you feel like that day is coming closer. Now, April. April was a long month, wasn't it? The restrictions, the pandemic fears made it seem like it was a long month anyway. But here at Chalmers, we tried to inject some life into the month of April as uh, we thought of April as our Easter month. Not just Easter at the very beginning of the month, but Easter all throughout the month, every Sunday. And we looked all month long at the resurrection of Christ as reported 
through the eyes and through the recollections and through the gleaned stories of all four of the gospel writers. We looked at the resurrection according to Mark, Luke, John, and then we finished with Matthew just last week. And coming out of our study of Christ's resurrection from the grave and the next 40 days of teaching before he left his disciples with this final commission and assurance of his presence with them, coming out of our study of that, I want us to consider for the next couple of Sundays, or at least for a couple of Sundays in the month of May, what the implication is for us. What are we here for now? In light of the Great Commission, why does the church exist? Capital C, why does the church exist? What is our role here in our particular place, in this world? In our particular corner of the world, what's our role? How, as uh, one of the old-timers said, how shall we then live? Now these are some of the big sort of existential questions that the Church of Jesus Christ needs to grapple with, at least to a certain extent, as we chart our path, figure out whether we're just going to be another service organization, whether we're just going to be another social club, or if our reason for being and if our purpose is, is something higher than that. And more important than that. And I know myself as a pastor, I've never wanted to be thought of or to think of myself as the leader of a social club. Though social interaction is all the more incredibly important as we've been uh, reminded this past year, we exist for something more than just ourselves, right? Now, too much of that inward thinking can be just almost, I think, as detrimental as too little of that inward thinking. I mean, we don't want to start navel-gazing. We want to just think enough about who we are and what we're called to do so that we can have then a clear understanding of what our call is. And then with the power of the Holy Spirit of God, we can join him in getting about that work and patiently trusting him for the results that he's already planned in his timing. Right? So we're going to think for a couple of Sundays this month about what God's purpose for Chalmers Community Church is what his vision for us is, what his mission for us is, what he has left us here on this earth, in this place, in this locality, and this time to do. Now, I don't want you, if you're not a member or an attender of Chalmers, I don't want you to switch this off and say, oh, this isn't for me today. No, because this can be something that is broader than just one church. This is something that you can take on or that I can take on as our basic life mission as well. This is something that sort of transcends one individual church. But this is how one individual church has chosen to explain it. Right? But there's, there's concepts that go beyond just the borders of our walls. Right? So, Lord willing, we're going to see what our focus is or what we want to be about. We're going to see our, uh, what our dream is or the desired impact that we want to have. We're going to see a little bit about our DNA as a church. What makes us who we are? What is the unchangeable core of Chalmers? I mean, society and the needs of society and the way that we minister to society, those things change over time. But the unchanging core of who we are is something that we've always been. And I want to take a little bit of a look at that. And, and it has to remain the same. The D, you can't change your DNA in your body, and we can't change who we are as a church. We're also going to take a little bit of a look at our beliefs, or the things that we as a church believe to be true. Our, our uh, doctrinal statement, as it were our statement of faith. And those beliefs then provide the motivation for what we do and why we do it the way we do it. Now, this is not all going to happen today. It's going to take at least a couple sermons for us to get through this. So we're going to start today and we're going to finish later on in the month. But we're not going to do this next week because next week is a very special Sunday. Next week, Sunday, May 9th. What is that? It is Mother's Day. And Unfortunately, though, for the second year in a row, Mother's Day is going to be celebrated under the cloud of COVID and all of its restrictions. But we still want to make Mother's Day special because our mothers and the ladies, the, the female influences in our lives, are so important to us and we believe that you are special. Uh, and even though we won't be able to get together, we still want to celebrate mothers. A couple ways we're going to do that. Joanne Alexander, bless her heart, she was planning a really nice Mother's Day gift to be given to all of the ladies in the church. We cannot physically give that gift to all the ladies in the church because we can't meet. But uh, like so much uh, of the many of the things in our lives these days, that plan had to be changed. So Joanne is providing for us a digital Mother's Day present. 
digital Mother's Day present that's going to be forwarded to you next week. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to enjoy it almost as much as if we were able to hand that special gift to you, right? Something else special will be happening next Sunday. And I'm particularly excited about this. Uh, Ruth is going to be joining me. My wife Ruth is going to be joining me in presenting the message. Ruth and I are going to do kind of a tag team message together on Mother's Day Sunday. So you'll be hearing not only me droning on, you'll be hearing her lovely voice uh, uh, as well. Uh, enlightening and uh, making better the sermon, right? So I hope you'll join us next Sunday as well for uh, those special, couple of special things on Mother's Day. And uh, one other public service announcement starting this week, starting right today and every Sunday at 10 a.m. until we meet in person again. In fact, some of you are maybe doing this right now. We are going to be hosting a Zoom watch party for our message. Uh, our previously recorded message, and then we're going to have a discussion time afterwards. So if, as you're watching this, if it's any time before about 10.30 a.m. on Sunday morning, as you're watching this, if you're not on the Zoom call and you want to join in, just respond to the Zoom invitation that came with your service links this morning in your inbox, and you can join the group and have some uh, human in interaction and some human connection after the message as we discuss a few questions together. Uh, based on the message. All right, so you're welcome to join us uh, and uh, respond to that Zoom invitation. That will be coming in your inbox every Sunday morning starting today. So this week and a couple weeks from now, uh, we're going to be looking at um, ideas with regard to vision, mission, that sort of thing. Take your sermon outline because this is where I want you to start considering the sermon outline for today. I'm calling this Chalmers Vision 2021 series. Uh, today is part one, and on May 16th we'll do part two, and we'll do a part three if we have to, but uh, part one at least today. And, and this is Chalmers Community Church, our focus and our dream. Those are the two things I want to take a look at today. Next time we'll look at our unchanging DNA, and we'll look at our beliefs, and uh, perhaps even touch a little bit on the, um, the, the fellowship of churches to which we belong, and uh, that helps to, uh, to explain who we are as well. But uh, now, I, I, and an important caveat I want to give you as we start. This may simply be a restatement for some of you of what you already know. Uh, I'm not saying anything new here this morning. Much of what I'm going to present is stuff that already graces the Chalmers website, already gives words to how we already describe ourselves to anybody who, wanted, who, who may want to check us out online, Okay. This is also much of what we will teach when we do our newcomers class or our membership classes for anybody new to the church or anybody who wants to become a member. So these things, all of the points in your sermon outline that you'll be filling in this morning are things that have already been thought through and are already part of our church's uh, vision and mission. But I believe it's important, in fact, every church I've been to, it's important to, uh, to, to emphasize these things over and over again because quite often, in fact, usually... Uh, if given the opportunity, church attenders might not be able to put into words what our church's mission and vision actually is. And so that's why I wanted to do this. But this, so this is stuff that's already on our website. It's stuff that's already a part of our uh, membership classes, which we've done in the past. Now, I've got to say this. Even though I never met Charlie Wallace, I've heard that one of the things that his heart absolutely beat for was to help newcomers to Chalmers understand who we are and what we stand for. The Discover Chalmers course that was so dear to him that he, uh, I believe, uh, understand he taught on some occasions. That particular course is right now being restored. It's being tweaked. Uh, so we are going to be able to teach it in his honor for a new generation of Chalmers attenders. Hopefully we'll be able to start that again. Restrictions not um, um, uh, allowing, we'll be able to start that uh, and to do that in a few months' time. I'm sort of setting my sights on being able to do the Discover Chalmers course perhaps early in the fall. But one of the things that stood out to me when I was reading the Chalmers website for the very first time, and that's over a year ago now, a year and a couple months ago, when I first found out about Chalmers and the, the opening for a, for a lead pastor here, of course, first thing you do is you check out the website, and that's what I did. And, but this really stood out to me, uh, and, and, and I thought it was really neat was there was this mention at the very beginning when Jesus said to a couple men who became his disciples, 
Um, and it comes from the beginning of the book of John. Uh, in fact, I want to read something to you. This is the first thing that you read on our Chalmers website after the COVID-19 update and a couple banners. Uh, the first thing, the first paragraph that uh, is the description of, of who we strive to be uh, and um, what we're simply wanting to encourage people to follow Jesus is sort of what this is about. But our website, it says this, and I just printed this off, and I'm just going to read it straight from our website. New to Chalmers? Welcome to Chalmers Community Church. We are a friendly, rural, faith community situated between Kincardine and Tiverton. At Chalmers, we strive to follow Jesus Christ authentically in our daily lives. We certainly don't claim to do this perfectly, but we do try. Chalmers is a unique church that can only be understood by experiencing it. The warm welcome that you get at Chalmers can best be described as coming home. Combine that with our mix of music styles, our community prayer time, and our belt-loosening shared meals. The experience you will get at Chalmers is hard to describe, but easy to experience. As Jesus called his disciples to check out what he was all about, so we also invite you to check out what God is doing in and through Chalmers. Come and see. And the reference is made to John chapter 1, verse 39. Now, I would agree that that paragraph explains us well. That's certainly the welcome that Ruth and I have felt, even through these COVID times, as we've come to be a part of this congregation. But you know what? I love the humility. I love the simplicity of it. We simply want to follow Jesus. We don't always get it right, but we keep trying. I love that. And if we have, as if we as a congregation have that sense of humility before God, that sense of authenticity, that is going to serve us well. Let's never, ever lose that. Let's never, ever get on our high horse and think that we've got everything all together because we really don't, right? We don't always get it right. Uh, but the other thing that stood out to me, uh, COVID has really kept us from enjoying those belt-loosening shared meals for well over a year now. But I, for one, I tell you what, I'm looking forward to being able to enjoy those meals. And I think that we'll be able to have, at least, here's a statement of faith, maybe we'll be able to have one or two of those belt-loosening shared meals before this year draws to a close. But the verse that, um, that's referred to at the very end there, from the first chapter of John, together with another one, uh, just a couple of verses later, it sums up for us Jesus' invitation to those guys, those guys who became his disciples, those guys who eventually changed the world. It sums it up really well. It's our invitation to the community as well. You see this on, the, on your sermon outline. Come, Jesus replied, and you will see. And then a little bit later, follow me. Come, Jesus replied, and you will see. Follow me. Me. Three important words there. And all this talk about our mission, our vision, our focus, our dreams, our beliefs, and all that, it will always come down to something that we want to do ourselves and we want to call others to join us in doing. Come to Jesus in trusting faith. See or experience Him for ourselves in relationship. And then follow Him in service and obedience. I want you to take your pen or your pencil and circle the word come. Circle the word see. Circle the word follow right? If we learn how to do that, come to Jesus in trusting faith, see and, and, and get to know him in, in, uh, in a relationship, and then follow him in serving and being obedient to him. If we learn how to do that, we're going to be in a good place, no matter how rough life may get from time to time. But I want to just help you fill in the blanks on your sermon outline about what our focus is and what the dream that Chalmers has always had in terms of impacting the world around us. Take a look. The next line, our focus, or what we want to be about. Chalmers Community Church seeks to encourage people in a few different ways. We, we seek to encourage people to connect, to grow, and to care. Right? There's two parts of connection, and then to grow and to care. And you know, I, what I want to tell you is, um, as I, I'm going to read straight from the source, okay? These are not my words, these are our words, our words that are already out there, our words that have already been put together to explain what our focus is as a church. And this is a, renew, uh, a review for some of you, all right? Let me just read, and again, I'm reading it straight from the source. I just printed this off, all right? Our focus. Chalmers Community Church seeks to encourage people in four ways. We seek to encourage people, number one, to connect with God. And here's what we say. At Chalmers, we believe that we were made to be in relationship with God. 
Connecting with God can be seen in two ways. First, for those who are disconnected from God, who have never heard the good news of God's love found in Jesus Christ, we are a church that encourages them to connect with God for the very first time. We believe that God is the author and provider of life. When we are disconnected from God because of our sin, the consequence is an unfulfilling, shallow life. When we connect with God through Jesus Christ, we find life in abundance and everlasting. It is because of this life in Christ that we want to encourage all who are disconnected from God to make that connection. So, I've only put one point under connect with God, but there's actually two parts of it. The first point, part of connecting with God is connecting initially through putting our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And then, again, we say this. Second, and this is still part of point one on your outline. Second, for those who are connected to God through Jesus Christ, we want to encourage each other to remain connected. Jesus commands us to remain in him as a vine remains in the branch, or as the branch remains in the vine, the source of its life. As Christians, we need to constantly be connecting with God through prayer, worship, scripture, God's creation, each other, and any other ways that God chooses to reveal himself. End of quote from our materials, all right? So connecting with God, that initial connection through trusting in Jesus, and then remaining in him, just as the branch must remain in the vine. I refer to that in our, uh, in our um, uh, devotional, uh, midweek devotional on Wednesday, about what Jesus said in John 15 about that, how we need to remain in him. Well, Chalmers Community Church seeks to encourage people to connect with God, number one. Number two, Chalmers uh, seeks to encourage people to connect with each other. That's your second point. Connect with each other. And let me read, uh, again, not my words, but our words here as a church. At Chalmers, we believe that we were made to be in relationship with others. We were never meant to do life by ourselves, but in community. God calls Christians to support each other in their faith journey by encouraging and being accountable to one another. At Chalmers, we value people and building relationships. We will continue to foster an environment where people feel welcome, safe, and a part of something bigger than themselves. Now, this connecting with each other is something that's been very, very tough to do this year, hasn't it? Because there's been um, uh, so many uh, barriers in the way of connection. That's why we've had to get uh, a little bit more creative in finding ways. Now, there's the point three and point four there in terms of our, 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 our focus. Um, and again, let me just read from the source, okay? These are not my words. These are our words. Number three, uh, Chalmers Community Church seeks to encourage people to, number three, grow to be like Jesus. Grow to be like Jesus. And this is what we say. The essence of the Christian faith, faith is that God loves us before we can do anything to deserve his love. He takes us in the broken state that we're in and offers us healing and grace unconditionally. But he doesn't leave us in that broken state. Filled with his spirit, God begins to make us more like his son Jesus as he heals our brokenness. At Chalmers, we work with God in this process through encouraging and supporting each other in this lifelong process through discipleship, programs, biblical teaching, and peer accountability. Now, there's a lot of things we can unpack with that, but essentially... We're saying that part of our focus not only is to start this relationship, but to continue to grow, realizing that we never get to the point where we have it all together. We never get to the point where we've learned everything. And number four, Chalmers um, is encouraging, pe encouraging uh, people to care for our community and beyond, right? We seek to encourage people to care for our community and beyond. And this is what we say. Our name, Chalmers Community Church, emphasizes that we are a church for our community. Jesus calls us to love our neighbors, ourselves, as well as to go into the world and make disciples. At Chalmers, we aim to care for our neighbors with the love of God in words and actions. We also want to be a faith community that allows God to use us to spread his love far beyond the boundaries of Bruce County. Like a ripple effect, we want to care for the local needs of our community, but also for the needs around the world. Now, I like that. As a ministry focus, I like that. I can get behind this. I, I, I can support this. The desire to connect and to grow and to care, all of these, all of what we do should point ultimately back to one or more of those things. Connecting with God, connecting with each other, growing to be like Jesus and caring for the community and beyond. So then somebody along the way, I'm not sure how long ago this happened, but along the way, 
somebody asked a, an important and a wise question, or a set of questions, I guess. If the ministry focus is to be carried out effectively, what do we hope that we would look like, right? What is the dream or the desired impact that Chalmers could have on our own people, on our community, and, and even beyond the community? And you can, you can extrapolate this to yourself, you know, if, 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 you know, if this is going to be my focus, what's the dream? What's the dream outcome? And I say yes to that. Again, great question. Great opportunity to, to sketch out or to think, in, you know, put our mind's eye to use. What we could look like if our dream were to become a reality. So our dream or the impact that we would like to have, and again, these are not my words, these are our words as a church community, stated on our own website, stated in our own Discover Chalmers course, stated in our, in our own uh, other materials, words that describe our whole church's dream as first outlined years ago and as highlighted by me again today and, as, and maybe highlighted in other times in the past, okay? And here's your other four blanks to fill in, our dream or the impact that we'd like to have. And again, I'm just reading right from the source. At Chalmers, we dream of, number one, being a Christ-centered community. If our focus is going to happen, we are going to be a Christ-centered community. And this is what we say. At Chalmers, we dream of creating a safe and healthy place of worship, prayer, and study of Scripture for people to glorify God. We recognize as followers of Jesus Christ that we are people of hope, and we live to show each other that Jesus loves us and came to be our friend and our Savior. We commit to one another to be unshakable on the essentials of our Christian faith, and unflappable on the rest. I really like that statement. We want to be Christ-centered, and part of being Christ-centered is knowing what is worth standing up, what's worth giving our lives for, and what is a little bit, maybe not so much. And so we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about what it looks like to be unshakable on the essentials of the Christian faith, and unflappable on the rest, or not allow to ourselves to get into a tizzy on the things that really aren't as important as the essentials, right? That's what being Christ-centered is all about, or at least part of what it's being about. At Chalmers, secondly, we dream of being a growing community, right? We want to grow personally in our relationship with Jesus. We also want to grow numerically as well, and this puts some words to that. Uh, and this is, again, not my words. These are our words. At Chalmers, we dream of a church filled with people of different cultures, ages, backgrounds, and social status. We anticipate providing ministries that allow all members of a family to connect with God so that the next generation will be encouraged through their association with believers. We will foster an environment at Chalmers where people are excited to invite their friends, family, and neighbors to come and check out what God is doing. With a welcoming spirit, we will invite everyone to experience their freedom in Christ. Again, there's a lot to unpack there, and we won't be able to unpack it all, but we want to be, or our dream is for us to be growing. And we see a lot of words there. Different cultures, backgrounds, generations, a welcoming spirit, freedom in Christ. All of those things are part of being a growing community. At Chalmers, we dream of being Christ-centered and we dream of being a growing community. Number three, again, our words say this. At Chalmers, we dream of being a caring and disciple-building community disciple building community. What's a disciple? A disciple is simply a follower of somebody. We want to build followers of Jesus Christ. We want to be, be a uh, disciple building community. And, and here are our words. At Chalmers, we dream of being a safe, healthy, caring community for people to connect with God and grow in their relationship with Jesus. As a fellowship of believers, we will pray together, hold each other accountable in our spiritual lives, and deepen our friendships. We will prepare each new generation to serve and follow Jesus Christ to enable them to be powerful servant leaders in our church and community. We will encourage and equip each other to serve God through the passions, talents, and spiritual gifts that he has blessed us with. We want to be a disciple-building community, and that helps the community. And the fourth point talks about our help to the community as well. Part of our dream, we want to be a Christ-centered community, a growing community, a caring and disciple-building community. And number four, at Chalmers, we dream of being vital in our community. Vital in our community. Vital, V-I-T-A-L. And here's what we say. At Chalmers, we dream of being a church that is so vital within the community that if we were, dis that if we were to disappear tomorrow, it would be front-page news. We want to foster an attractive environment within our church for people to come and experience God. 
We also see ourselves as local missionaries who step out in faith to take God's love and mercy into the community. As a church, we will be open to listening to community needs and we will seek to care for those needs in the name of Jesus. Being vital in the community is something that I think is very important to go after. This is where things like the freezer ministry, providing food for those who need food, the uh, visitation program, the garden ministry, all of those things are part of what it means to be vital in the community and part of what, it, uh, of what we can do to share the love of God in actions, but then actions always need to turn into words as well. So the things that go into the focus of Chalmers and the dream of what Chalmers could be these are noble things that we should be striving together to achieve. But we need God's guidance. We need God's unction. We need God's Holy Spirit power and presence if any of this is ever going to get done to a large and continuous extent. But let me tell you, it's very good to know, and it takes all the pressure off. It's good to know that ultimately it doesn't depend on us. I'm so thankful for that fact. I really am. Anybody ever been in leadership in a church, if you've been on a board of a church, if you've ever been a leader in any way, shape, or form, sometimes you feel this mantle of pressure that it all depends on you. But it doesn't, ultimately. It depends on Christ. And we have to depend on Him. We have to rest in His everlasting arms, right? We cannot and should not look at ourselves or anyone else as being the ones responsible. No. We should not be assigning blame if we see ourselves falling flat in any of those ways. If we see ourselves falling flat in any of the things I've outlined this morning right now. Because ultimately it depends on God. You see, I believe that when, when God sees us as a church, He sees us not only as we are right this moment, but He sees what we could be. He sees, in fact, perhaps what we will be as we allow Him to work in and through us. A couple weeks from now, we're going to continue with some of these thoughts as we look up things that, or look at things that make up our DNA as a group of believers, or a picture of Chalmers through the ages, from generation to generation, what has always remained the same, and how that comes out in our beliefs or in our statement of faith. But for now, whether you're able to join us for our discussion time at the end of this message or uh, on the Zoom call or not. There are some questions at the bottom of your sermon outline, and I'll attempt to do this every week when we have the, the, the Zoom discussion time, to have some questions at the bottom of your sermon outline that I think are really good questions to consider. Uh, whether you have the opportunity to discuss these with somebody else or not, or whether you just have some time, even now or, or later this afternoon, to sort of sit down and mull over these things, it's good to think through these things. And these questions are, first of all, what, why do you think the church capital C church, any church, not just ours, why do you think the church exists? Secondly, I want you to take your Bible out and read Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 18. Matthew 16, 13 through 18. And then think, what do you think Jesus meant when he said that the gates of hell or Hades would not prevail against or, or, or overcome or overpower the church? Jesus said to Peter, you are Peter, and upon this rock, upon your confession of faith, Peter, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. What do you think Jesus meant when he said that? I want you to also thirdly consider, why is it good for us to dream about what our church could do, or could be? Why is it a good thing to dream about what could be, or what we're aiming or striving for? Number four, how can we determine then what the Lord wants us to pursue as a congregation? In other words, out of the thousand different things that we could do, we can't be all things to all people. So how do we then determine what it is that God is leading us to do specifically that may be the same or different from what other churches do? How do we unpack and uncover and discover that? And then number five, I want you to think back to a time in your past when you were proud of your church, it could be Chalmers, it could be any other church maybe that you were part of back then, but a time when you were proud of your church, a time when you thought, now that's an example of the church being what we're supposed to be. I think it's good for us to kind of mull over some of those questions as we consider our focus, as we consider our dream, our DNA, our goals for the future, what makes us who we are. Well, thank you for being willing to take a few minutes this morning to think in terms of vision and mission, the focus and the dream of our church. Uh, as I say, join us next week in our online service as Ruth and I share together in uh, uh, the Mother's Day message and uh, as we send to you 
a, a special digital Mother's Day gift. Then we'll come back on May 16th, Lord willing, to think more about vision and mission, specifically giving attention to this unshakable core of what makes up our church and the beliefs that we stand for as we serve God in Kincardine and Southern Bruce County and beyond, all the areas and little towns and villages to, uh, to which we, we belong and are a part and that folks within our congregation uh, where, where we live. Uh, and I would encourage you to join with us for our Zoom watch party and discussion time every Sunday morning, beginning today, first one today, every Sunday morning, 10 a.m., you're more than welcome to come and be a part of that uh, until we meet again in person. All right? Thanks so much, everybody. Let's close in prayer, shall we? And then we'll be done for today, and I'll let you go. Oh, Father God, we want to thank you so much. Praise you for the fact that you accomplish great and grand things when your people simply submit to you. Here we are in this very tiny corner of your harvest field, and we want to understand and focus on what you have led us to do. We want to understand and focus on what, 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 your, what your dream is for us. We want to dream your dreams. Lord, I'm, I'm reminded of that great little line that says, little is much when God is in it. And we realize that we have little offer, but we, we bring the little we have to you and we submit to you. And we know that little is much when God is in it. We believe that you are here now and we invite you to remain and to expand your impact as we simply rely on you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We pray this in Jesus' precious and powerful name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks again so much, Chalmers family and friends. God bless you. Until we meet again, have a great rest of your weekend and uh, we'll see you soon. All right, take care.